Hi guys, I wanted to um, share some progress regarding cutscenes in FXGL. Um, I have modeled cutscenes um, of a game called Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and I quite like the cutscene mechanism in that game. So, in this video, I'm going to talk you through the features that we're going to have or currently already have, and maybe a bit about its implementation and um, what it would look like at the sort of when it's completed. Right, so what we have currently is our main character, which is um, Blue Box. We have our NPC, Red Box, and we have three coins, which are yellow circles. So when we collide with the NPC, it doesn't have to be a collision. Anything can trigger um, cutscene, which is just a method call. So this is the cutscene. Uh, we can say hello, and the NPC will reply, hey, what is your name leads to my name is NPC. And um, so yeah, we can see that we can map dialogue lines of the player to dialogue lines of the NPC. However, this is not just pure data. The content is written in JavaScript. And that means you can write valid JavaScript code, as well as have full access to the FXGL infrastructure. So you can actually call various subsystems like graphics, audio, physics, etc. And one of the things you can do is call quest manager. So if we say, you got any work? He'll say, yes, go collect three coins. And as you'll notice, we now have a quest that says collect coins. And that quest was triggered by the JavaScript code in the script that says add quest with title collect coins, track this variable, which is a global variable, and I'll come back to that. And number we need is three. So we need to collect three coins. So this is one of the features. Let's call it feature one. Um, being able to talk to FXGL from JavaScript. Now if we um, trigger the cutscene again, and if we say, you have any work, he says, you already have work to do. And he knows that because he's given us the quest. And this is feature two. You can kind of filter the lines. You can call stuff from uh, within the actual dialogue. So we can ch um, check if the player has quests. And if he does, then we want to reply with number four, which is this. And also, if he doesn't have any quests, then we can give him, give him the quest. Right, so that was feature two. Um, let's collect the coins. So one, two, so you can see the quest tracker tracks the number of coins that we've collected. And three, uh, we can see that the yellow, um, the green thing shows us that we've collected everything. So now when we come back to the NPC, you can see that we now have another line, which is a new option that wasn't available before. I have the coins. So this is feature three. You can filter through the lines and select those that should not be accessible or should be accessible at any point in the game. And this is called precondition for that line. So we check if the line is three, which is um, I have the coins. You know that this line can only be selected when the player actually has the coins. And we check if coins is greater or equal to three which is now correct because we've collected the three coins now back to the global variables so um you might remember that in effectsgl 0.3 we introduced um this concept of a global variable that is accessible from anywhere in the game 
and it, they can be created using um, this map. So at the beginning of the game, we selected coins, which is the identifier for that variable, and we gave it the value of zero. So if you use the exact same identifier, because it is, after all, the identifier for that variable, you can access um, the value of that variable at any sort of using any source code, whether it's JavaScript, Java, or Kotlin. So you can have um, this. You can say int, which isn't a keyword, so we can use that in JavaScript, uh, or at least in this particular um, scoped JavaScript code, and use the identifier to get the value of, the, uh, of that variable. In the same way, we can do it here with quests, so you can track the variables. These variables are stored as properties, as JavaFX properties, which means that they can be um, bound to, and you can also listen to changes for those variables. But that's besides the point, because that's something to do with global variables and not with cutscenes. But anyway, it's something um, to remember, I suppose. So yeah, as you can see, um, our scripts written in JavaScript are quite powerful. I still don't know if this is going to be sort of the end look of it, because there is quite a lot of things that need to be typed exactly as they are. So you don't get type safety, which is not something that I would prefer to have. Ideally, these would be type safe, or at least they will be short, so you don't have to type the whole thing. So player lines could be PC, NPC lines just NPC and stuff like that. Um, but generally you get the concept and how that works. So we can say I have the coins and he'll say give me and we say buy. So we've collected, uh, we've finished the quest, so we, can, we can get rid of the quest. And um, yeah, that was it. So hopefully the cutscenes will make their way into the next release and I'll let you know if anything changes. Thanks for watching.